This is the MAT 140 lesson number seven, Introduction to Matrices and Matrix Multiplication. The first example says, if a three by four matrix A is multiplied by a four by five matrix B, what are the dimensions of the resulting matrix AB? So the first thing to point out is that you can't just multiply any two random matrices. Uh, the dimensions have to be just right. And so let's look at the dimensions for each of these. So we have matrix A, which is a 3 by 4. When you say 3 by 4, this is the rows. This is the columns. So there's three rows, four columns. And then compare that with matrix B, it's a 4 by 5. So that's four rows and five columns. And what we're checking to see is if these are the same, the columns of the first matrix, the rows of the second matrix have to be the same. And so if we multiply these two together, we'll get a matrix C, which will have three rows and five columns. So whatever product results, you can always take the rows of the first matrix and the columns of the second matrix, and those are the dimensions of the resulting uh, product of the two matrices. I'll point out that um, I, the way that I remember its rows, columns, is I either, sometimes I think remote control or radio control, and that little phrase gets the R and then the C, and that's how I remember the order that it's rows and then columns. And let's just point out that you could not multiply B times A in that particular order. B times A, because B was a 4 by 5, and A is a 3 by 4, and the columns of B is not the same as the rows of A, and so it can't be done. The multiplication is not defined when the columns of the first and the rows of the second matrix aren't equal. Okay, question two says, consider the matrices given below, A and B. These are two by two matrices, both of them two by two. And since we have a two by two multiplied with a two by two, we certainly could multiply them together, right? A two by two, if it's multiplied times another two by two, then, then we know the result will be a two by two because the result is, first of all, we can multiply them because these are the same. And then we know that the result is, has dimensions that are the first number here and the last number there. So we can do A times B, and we can also be, do B times A. There's certainly cases where, like you just saw, where you might be able to multiply in one way, but you can't multiply the other way. So this is a case, uh, maybe a first real significant case, where uh, we don't have commutivity that you're accustomed to with normal multiplication. You've always thought 5 times 2 is the same as 2 times 5, but with matrices, A times B isn't the same as B times A. Sometimes it can't even be done. And if it can be done one way or the other, uh, they aren't necessarily equal. Like here, we'll have A times B, and then we'll do B times A, and it's very likely that the answers won't be the same. So multiplication of matrices is not commutative. So it says, find both matrix AB and the matrix BA, write the steps by hand, or use a calculator or a computer. It's not necessary to show all the steps. Well, I'm going to do uh, how it's done by hand, and I'll demonstrate on the calculator, and also how you could do this on the computer. Uh, all of those will be useful uh, skills. So if we start with A times B, let's write down the matrices. Sometimes we'll use brackets like that, and sometimes it doesn't really matter. You can use parentheses, you can use the square brackets. People use, you know, either way. I might go back and forth either way as, as well. So, and you can put a times or just put them next to each other. That's also understood. So I'm going to multiply with this matrix 3, 1, 
2 and negative 5. So this is A and this is B. Okay, so I know that the answer is going to be a 2 by 2. And in order, so there's going to be four numbers that I'm going to fill in. And how do you get those four numbers? Well, to get this first spot here, you take the first row of the first matrix and the first column. So row one, column one, the result is going to be in row one, column one. So, and the way to do it is to simultaneously multiply the four and the three. So we'll say four times three and then plus and then multiply the 0 and the 2. 0 times 2. So it's like I'm following this row and this column. That's row 1, column 1, and the result goes in row 1, column 1. So what I have here is 12 plus 0, so it's going to be a 12 in the top corner. Now, you can do any one of these next. So suppose that I want to do this one next. Well, this is the first row in the second column. So take the first row of this matrix and the second column of that matrix and do the same thing. You're going to multiply the 4 and the 1 and then plus the 0 and the negative 5. 4 times 1 plus 0 times negative 5. Okay, if I move on to this spot, what I'm doing is looking at the bottom row, second row, and the first column. This is the second row, first column. So the result goes there. Take this row, take this column, and multiply uh, going across this row and down this column. So the negative 2 and the 3 gives me a negative 6. And then add the next one. In this case, it'll be 3 times 2. That's a positive 6. So that means I get 0 in that spot. Last one is the bottom row, second column. Second row, second column. So negative 2 times the 1, that's a negative 2, plus 3 times negative 5, that's a negative 15. So that gives me negative 17. And that's the first product, A times B. Let's do B times A. Unlikely, it's most likely it's not going to be the same. I mean, it could be, probably won't be. To complete this question, we'll do B times A and compare the result. So we're going to multiply the matrix 3, 1, 2, negative 5 with the matrix 4, 0, negative 2, 3. So I'm going to multiply the 3 and the 4. That's 12 plus a negative 2. 12 plus negative 2. Now I could go on to the first row and the second column. So then it's the first row and the second column. So you're looking at this row and this column and you get 0 plus 3. So that's 3. The next thing I could do is I could take the uh, second row and the first column and multiply there. I get 8 plus, sorry, I get 8 plus 10, so that's 18. 8 plus 10. And now for this last spot over here, what I'll do is the bottom row and the second column, I'm going to get 0, 2 times 0, that's 0 plus negative 15. So that's negative 15. And that's it. And then I can see, yeah, sure enough, it's right there. AB and BA are different. Multiplication with matrices is not commutative. All right, so let's have a look at how to do this multiplication on the calculator. We'll do a lot of this, uh, so you don't always want to do it by hand. Sometimes the numbers are big, sometimes there's a lot of entries, uh, and so the calculator is really convenient for this kind of um, operation. So, so to, to do matrix multiplication, there's a it says matrix right here above the um, x to the negative 1 button. So we need to get, we have to hit second and then matrix. And to enter in, we'll have to do, we'll have to edit the matrix. So let's move over to the edit menu and hit enter. 
And I can see that right now I already had a 4 by 5 matrix in the calculator. And what I want to enter in right now is a 2 by 2. So let me tell it that I want a 2 by 2. And then I can enter in 4, 0, and then negative 2, and 3. So that's the matrix A. Okay, and then I have to quit from that editor in order to enter in another one. So then I go back to the matrix menu, back to edit, but I want to enter in another matrix B. So hit enter. And this is also a 2 by 2. And the matrix has entries 3, 1, 2, and negative 5. And that's entered in, so I have to quit from the editor. So a second, and then this button, which has quit right above it. And then uh, what I do, I want to do now is to multiply. So to do the multiplication, you have to go back and uh, reference the matrix. So you could just stay with the option that we have here when it references the names of the matrix. And you could just hit Enter. So you get matrix A, and then you say times, and then let's look up matrix B. So I want matrix B, and that's uh, matrix B, and that's A times B, so then hit enter. There it is, four, uh, 12, 4, 0, negative 17, how did we do? Twelve, four, zero. okay, got it right, good. It agrees. Let's try the other one. Well, it's easy now. I've already entered them in. So the other one is just multiplying in the other order. So let's see. That would be second matrix. I want to reference the matrix B. So I want to do B, matrix B, times matrix A. And hit enter. So 10, 3, 18, and negative 15. Yeah, sure enough. There it is. Done. Good. All right, that works. So this is the website matrixcalc.org, and it's one that I use a lot. Uh, you can Google search and find many of them, and you might prefer a different one. This one has worked well for me for a lot of things that I've done, so I'll, I go back to this one uh, first. Um, maybe try some other ones, but matrixcalc.org is where I'm at, and. Uh, I want to do a multiplication, which I have lots of options here, but this is already set up for 3 by 3, so let me just reduce the size. And I want to make sure I get the matrices that I want to enter in right. So I'm going to enter in 4, 0, negative 2, and 3 into my matrix A. Matrix B, I need it also to be 2 by 2. Let's go 3, 1, 2, negative 5, and then multiply, and uh, there it is, right there. We get 12, 4, 0, negative 7. Yeah, this is nice. You see how it's giving me, oh, that's cool also. You can see as, as I kind of hover the mouse over that calculation there, it's showing me which rows and columns were used. That's the first row, second column. Second column, I mean, second row, first column. No, I said that wrong. Second second row, second column, obviously, right there. Uh, so it's actually showing you some of the, the, the actual work to, to produce that answer. I think what's down here is just left over from some previous calculation. Maybe it remembers what I did last time. So, so there it is. So then another thing that is kind of convenient here, I could just switch them and then multiply. And I get that 10, 3, 18, negative 15 that I know um, was the result of multiplying this matrix times that matrix. So here's another website. looks pretty good. This is Symbolab.com. So go into Symbolab. If I start at Symbol Lab, hit this Solutions button, and then look down here on the left, Matrices and Vectors. Clicking on that, 
actually I think I already had it but these are a lot of options that will use uh, that will do um, calculations on matrices and in order to enter a matrix just click this one over here and tell it what size you want I want a 2 by 2 the 2 by 2 that I want to enter in 4 0 negative 2 and 3 and I want to multiply that with another 2 by 2 3 1 2 negative 5 go nice alright Looks like it's showing you how it got there. So, all right. Looks like we could print out, produce a PDF. Okay, pretty good. So this will be a uh, probably a pretty helpful website also for this class and maybe some other classes. Okay, the next example says a bank has three sources of income: business loans, auto loans, and home loans or mortgages. The income it receives from these types of loans is used as venture capital. Projected income from each source over the next few years is given in the table. Assume the bank will use 40% of its business loan income, 20% of its auto loan income, and 30% of its home mortgage income as venture capital. So that's the information that's given in the table and then it says use a computer or calculator to perform the necessary matrix multiplication to find the total income available to be spent on venture capital each year. Write the answer indicating venture capital available each year and write what matrices were multiplied but you don't have to write all of the steps of the multiplication just what you're going to multiply and what the answer is. So maybe you can see that if I choose to call this matrix A call that matrix A, call that matrix B, then multiplying A times B would produce the answer exactly what we're looking for here where we'd be getting 40% of the business loan income in 2018. Then we could multiply this one and this one and get 20% of the auto loan income and then we would get 30% of the home loan income, all of that for 2018. So that first row uh, would contain the total amount of money available for venture capital for that year. We could figure out how much money total is available in 2019 by multiplying this row times this column, right? We would get 40% of this number, we'd get 20% of that number, and we'd get 30% of that number, and we'd add it all together, and that would be the amount of venture capital available for 2019, and we'd do the same thing for 2020. Uh, so let's let's do that, and absolutely, let's let's use the calculator to do it. It's these numbers are big enough, and it's it's just so much easier on the calculator. Let's do it that way. So I want to change matrix A to be the incomes from these three categories in those three different years. So that's a three by three matrix. Let's edit matrix A, and we'll make it a three by three, and then I'll just add, enter in all those values. So that's my matrix A, and this will be my matrix B. So go to matrix B and edit that. Now this is three rows and one column. So row, column, three by one. Of course, it's not really so necessary to memorize that anymore because it's sort of built into the calculator. As soon as you type it in, it tells you that you've got three rows and one column. But used to be didn't have a calculator to do this and so it's kind of nice to remember uh, radio control that's the rows first then columns alright so I want percentages I'm gonna do percentages of these numbers so I'm actually gonna type in the actual number not the percent sign so I'll put in a point four 
and a point two and a point three. All right, and then quit from that. And now I want to go back to the matrix um, uh, menu because I want to multiply A times B, so I need to refer to matrix A and then multiply it with matrix B. And so here, these values represent the total amounts available for venture capital in each of those uh, three years. Okay, so that means that there's $449,480 available for venture capital in 2018, $415,000 available in 2019, and $449,700 in 2020. Okay, and that's the end of this lesson.